I got on campus and everybody's high school knowledge runs out at some point in college. Mine lasted about four minutes on campus and I thought, oh, wow, I am really in trouble. I am utterly ill-equipped for this environment. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. When I got to my chemistry class, took my first exam, I failed it. And I'm not talking like a 68 fail, I'm talking like a 43%, lots of questions, just completely blank. And, and I felt like, well, this, I guess I'm done. Like, I guess I'm not gonna be a science major. And mentally, I started to doubt myself. I started to doubt that I could even do it. I didn't know that I had the potential to do something really great. And I needed somebody to very explicitly tell me, you can do this, Brian. You're, this is a great career opportunity for you. you. You're smart enough and you're good enough to go on and get a PhD. You know, luckily I had faculty members at that time who really inspired me to pursue, to pursue science. I met my wife Kelly in Biology 101. I sat in the front of the room. And she sat in the back of the room. We take the first exam, our professor calls her out for being the smartest person in the class and getting the highest score, which probably breaks every rule and law about academic privacy. And I remember looking over my shoulder and being like, okay, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you on that next exam. It took me a while for her to agree to go on a date with me. And it wasn't until our junior year that we, that we started the date. Uh, if it wasn't for us meeting that Bio 101 class, I don't think we ever, our paths would have crossed. There, there are a lot of problems that you can run away from in life, but when the problem's between your two ears, it's pretty hard to run away from those problems. I moved from New Jersey to Tucson, Arizona, and started my PhD program, and I was still dealing with those issues of is this the point where I go and somebody figures out that I'm a fraud? Um, and so there's fear associated with that. Within about 10 to 15 minutes, I was like, oh man, this was a terrible, terrible mistake. And not having Kelly in my life was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. At the end of first semester, I packed up all my gear into my little green pickup truck and I drove back to New Jersey with my tail between my legs. There's a saying, if ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas. I did a lot of, well, what if I had done this? What if I had done that? You know, at times, like, you're, you dropped out. You dropped the ball. You ruined your life and you're only 22 or 23 years old. How are you gonna dig yourself out of this hole? I was willing to take absolutely any job that I could that I can get hired to do. However, industry is a, can be very repetitive, particularly if you're a bachelor's level scientist. The unit that I worked for, we had all gotten laid off. I took that as a sign. I, was, I thought, this is great, because it gave me clear separation and an opportunity for me to now say, all right, I'm gonna go back to grad school. And I had applied here at Carolina and I had been accepted. So when I got laid off, I was, I, I actually was pretty happy. So it was during my first year of graduate school that, that we got married, December of my first year of graduate school. That was you know, one of the best days of my life. And by the time I was finishing my PhD, my wife was pregnant with our first child. We were very fortunate in that we, got, we both got jobs here at Carolina. I felt like I was just barely getting by as a dad, as a husband, as a coworker, as a faculty member, you know, it was, I was just spread so thin. So once again, fear starts to creep into my life, just like the fear I had when I was living in Tucson and the fear that I had when I was in Trenton, New Jersey. But I got to a point where I, where, where I couldn't do it anymore. And uh, I, I needed help and I remember there was just one day where I said to Kelly, I, uh, I, need, I need help. And she said, okay, we can, we can, get, you, we can get you help, we can, you know, we can do this. It's hard to change the way that you view the world when you've spent your whole adult life being really negative. What I needed was I needed to go to a series of different types of 
professionals to help me out. Mental health professionals, they are well trained to help people deal with these sorts of things. And so when I started to, to work with them and listen to what they had to say, they put me on the path to, to wellness. It didn't happen overnight, but it got better slowly and then it got better quickly. My hope is that for my students is number one, that they, that they find joy in their lives. And once I changed the way that I looked at serving other people and, and being a teacher and being a mentor, I, I began to feel this is what makes me feel better about myself. It fills my soul. I'm lucky that I get to go to college every day for the rest of my life and be around really wonderful students as a college professor, that I can play some small part in their lives and I get to do it over and over and over again, which is really rewarding. It's okay if you don't feel like your life is going in this perfect straight line. I've gotten to a point in my life where everything is, is going pretty well. Um, but it wasn't always easy, and my path to get there was really circuitous. But I, I did persevere. I, I was able to, to get through it. And maybe they'll find a little bit of solace in this story. Somebody's been, I've been there. It turned out okay. Mm -hmm.